Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our IST QB AI tester certification. We are getting started with chapter 9 where we'll be talking about methods and techniques for the testing of AI based systems. And this chapter is going to have a lot of topics for you, of course, starting right from 9.1 adversarial attacks and data poisoning, kind of poisoning, yeah. 9.2 pairwise testing, 9.3 back-to-back testing, 9.4 AOB testing, 9.5 metamorphic testing, 9.6 experience-based testing for AI-based systems, and 9.7 selecting test techniques for AI-based systems. So put together, this chapter is going to have everything for you that what are those specific methods and techniques which are specially created for testing AI-based systems. As a part of today's tutorial, we are getting started with 9.2 adversarial attacks and data poisoning. Let's get started. Well, to talk about the very first thing here is adversarial attack. Now, adversarial attack is basically is where an attacker subtly perturbs valid inputs that are passed to the train model to cause it to provide incorrect predictions. Now, this is really, really uh, something very common related to security. And uh, there are people who look forward to pass on something more, uh, you know, weird inputs which are valid to the system, but try to make them uh, provide the incorrect predictions. Like sometimes they you. Uh, do get some kind of weird responses from the AI based systems though you try giving them inputs. So these perturbed inputs known as adversarial examples were first noticed with spam filter which could be tricked by slightly modifying a spam email without losing readability. Now recently they have become more associated with image classifiers by simply changing a few pixels which are invisible to the human eye it is possible to persuade a neural network to change its image classification to a very different object and with a high degree of confidence. Now look at this, you know, this is one of the beautiful examples to make you understand what are these perturbed inputs and at the same time, what are we referring to as adversarial attack uh, or attacks, right? So the example, what we just saw that it is, uh, when we talk about a high definition picture, which probably have uh, 1080 pixels there and we just want to make sure that we just try changing one or two pixels which probably makes the changes in the expectation of the image and you push this as an input to the train system and the system starts behaving differently according to the difference made or sometime it gives you the right output without any kind of change now adversarial examples are generally transferable which means that an adversarial example which causes one email system to fail will often cause another email, uh, sorry, another ML system to fail that is trained to perform the same task. Even when the second ML system has been trained with different data and is based on different architectures, it is often still prone to failure with the same adversarial examples. Why? Because of course we learned about the workflow of the ML models. There are different inputs and outputs nodes which you have and these algorithms connect to each other with respect to the inputs what are given to them. So sometime if this particular ML model fails, the other connectivity or other connected ML models will also tend to fail. And this is what it goes into chain reaction and certainly uh, the outputs will totally be different than what you are ex expecting. So white box adversarial attacks are where the attackers knows which algorithm was used to train the model and also which model setting and parameters were used. Now, there is a reasonable level of transparency which you provide. The attackers use this knowledge to generate adversarial examples by, for example, making small perturbations in inputs and monitoring which one caused large changes to the model output. So this is totally from the perspective of uh, the security attacks on the AI models. And of course, uh, these ML models tend to behave different uh, outputs as subjected you change a little bit of input. And that's what you call it as perturbation input, which returns into adversarial outputs. Also to continue, we talk about the black box adversarial attacks. It involves the attackers exploring the model to determine its functionality and then building a duplicate model that provides similar functionality. Now the attacker then uses a white box approach to identify adversarial examples for this duplicate model. And adversarial examples are generally transferable, 
the same adversarial example will normally also work on the original model too. So this is completely being spammed by those, uh, you know, duplicate models which are created and being replaced with what exactly they want the system to do. Now, if it is not possible to create a duplicate model, it may be possible to use high volume of automated testing to discover different adversarial examples and observe the result. Now, attackers, is, attackers are brilliant, right? They really find out ways of the way they can actually go ahead and penetrate into the system and try to make them do what they want them to do, right? And this is how they can just do repeated testing or repeated in queries, repeated inputs with a fake or, you know, perturbed data. And that's where the system would turn to, turn to start behaving something different. Now, adversarial testing simply involves performing adversarial attacks with the purpose of identifying vulnerabilities so that preventive measures can be taken to protect against fail future failures. Identifying adversarial examples are added to the training data so that the model is trained to correctly recognize them. Now, this is what the best part of this topic is, that what exactly is this method and why do we use it in testing? Because this is what will happen in the reality. So we as a tester, we need to conduct these adversarial attacks to try understanding how exactly the system will behave to these inputs and then try to protect the system from these attacks. At the same time, we are also talking about data poisoning. Now, of course, poison is not good for health, so it is not good for the AI-based systems as well. Now, data poisoning attacks are where an attacker manipulates the training data to achieve one of two results. The attackers may insert backdoors or neural network trojans to facilitate future intrusions, or more often, they will use corrupted training data, which is mislabeled data, to induce the trained model to provide incorrect predictions. Now the approach is slightly different, of course, like adversarial attacks were like training the input data, and here they are trying to insert Trojan-based viruses into the neural network itself through this. Now question is how exactly that would be possible, right? So poisoning attacks may be targeted with the aim of causing the ML system to misclassify in specific situation. They may also be indiscriminate, such as with denial of service attack. Denial of service attack, of course, it, it may restrict access to the people who are authorized to access it. So they may basically prov uh, revoke all the authorization access for people to get into the neural details. A well-known example of poisoning attack was the corruption of Microsoft Tay chatbot, whereby a relative small number of harmful tutor, harmful tutor conversations trained the system through feedback to provide tainted conversation in the future. <laughs> That's interesting to know. Certainly, if you can really push all these kind of information, the system tries to adapt on itself. And using those languages, using those uh, words, you can certainly behave in that particular fashion. A commonly used form of data poisoning attack uses the false reporting of millions of spam emails as not being spam in an attempt to skew spam filtering software. An area of concern with data poisoning is potential for public, widely used AI data sets to become poisoned. So certainly you know, this is what the result and outcome will be if this happens because you have almost poisoned the data altogether and then the system is actually getting trained through this poison data through their veins and resulting into the exact outputs based on the input what you have trained on. So an AI-based system to a certain extent, extent is dangerous because of this, because it doesn't have anything to decide on its own. All it goes by the input defined for them. And no matter what input you're giving, like kind of languages, the words, the pictures, whatever input you have. So the data set, what is being used is what is their learning material. If you train them with something wrong, they are tend to present the wrong results. If you train them with something right, though they give you the right results. The only option or only hope we have is there should not be any possible way by which you can poison the data and give them that poisoned food so that they react according to that, right? Or they spread the poison everywhere. So <laughs> that's the only point what we tried understanding from the data poisoning. But now let's talk about testing it. So testing to detect data poisoning is possible using EDA as poison data may show up as outliers. 
In addition, data acquisition policies can be reviewed to ensure the provenance of, uh, provenance of training data, where an operational ML system may be attacked by feeding it poison data. That is, ARB testing, which we'll be covering next, could be used to check, the, check that the updated version of the system is still closely aligned with the previous version. So a comparison can be very well performed in order to identify if there has been a change. And if the change is invited or change is observed, you can really look forward to deep dive and understand what this change is and how impactful that would be. Alternatively, regression testing of an updated system using a trusted test suite may also determine if the system has been poisoned, right? So you can only identify them, but I'm, think, I'm not sure, like, the syllabus doesn't talk about preventing it anymore right now because uh, this AI is still a domain where a lot of uh, revolution, a lot of kind of invention is being taken place, like people are still busy discovering. It's an area of study, but not something what we really know about everything. So the more you protect it, that's better. Like, try to prevent it from those so you can train the model somehow to detect such things, but I'm not sure how exactly will you do that because so far we have not discussed anything specific to that, right? We don't have any kind of understanding on that. Well, that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.